It's going to be a bolognese. We're also going to show you how to shift the bolognese into a chili with a few secret tips. So you can cook your bolognese with any kind of pasta, spinach pasta, egg pasta, whole wheat pasta, non-wheat based pastas, quinoa pasta, and another really good source of grain for pasta and bread is spelt. It's an ancient Roman grain and it's got less uh, allergy potential of modern, modern grown wheat. For the base of your bolognese sauce you're going to need celery, garlic, onions and a carrot. What's that called Sanj? Sofrito. Sofrito, it's delicious. Celery is an excellent fibrous vegetable. Medicinally it's uh, rumoured to be able to help with uh, things like high blood pressure. It's also very alkaline so it can help with conditions like gout. Okay that's eight cloves of garlic in there. We'll do enough bolognese for four people so it's two cloves per person. Now the carrot. Get those bits into the, the stock pot ready to go. Your carrot needs to be chopped pretty small so one good way of doing that is as follows. You don't want the carrot to roll around so you need to make a base for it. That way it's not going to roll anywhere. And then you need to slice it lengthways. Watch your fingers on this. Okay, maybe three or four times. Then you get it back on its base. And again, so you're making long little carrot sticks. Like that. Okay and then you take them like that and then you make carrot cubes because you don't really want to be able to see the carrot in the sauce and like this it will dissolve slightly with the celery and just leave a lovely flavour in that sauce obviously we're using all organic ingredients so we, there was no need to peel the carrot because we didn't need to get ready, rid of any of the nasty pesticides, herbicides and fungicides that go on to non-organic vegetables a lot of the nutrients are also directly beneath the skin so to keep keep the high amounts of nutrients in the food you, you shouldn't peel them. Same with any other vegetable really. Onions are good. One is they're a good source of carbohydrates so there's the same amount of carbs in an onion as there is in an apple. They're also very good because they contain plenty of natural anti-inflammatories so they have something in them called coercitin which takes inflammation away from cells so anything that can do that on a recovery day is, is a welcome part of your diet. On average we want maybe a tablespoon of oil per person. Here's a little tip, you can, you can leave a little bit of onion in the oil and you know when the oil is ready for the rest of the ingredients because it will just start sizzling like that. So in go the rest of those ingredients that you chopped. Lovely. So some good colours in there. And what you want to do is you cook these until they're just slightly softened and then you add the meat. So what we've got here is some nice farmer's market organic grass fed beef. Now the reason that's better for you is opposed to grain fed beef the ratio of omega 6 to omega 3 in grain fed beef is 20 to 1 which means it's 20 times worse for you in terms of its uh, inflammatory um, properties. This is, this is about 3 to 1 Cows are meant to eat grass, they're not meant to eat cornflakes, which is what they get fed to make them fat quickly. So it's worth taking a trip down to the farmer's market so you end up with better nutrients going into your body. Right, I'm turning that up now. Just keep stirring that as it's cooking so that you get all the, all the minced meats browned off nicely before the tomatoes and uh, seasoning goes in. But that's pretty much browned off now. So we're happy with that. And now we need to chuck in the tomatoes. Now you can use fresh ones if you want, but these are nice tinned organic ones. And if you're sort of a member of one of those macro shops, you know, a, whole, a wholesaler, then getting your organic ingredients is quite cost effective. Now we're going to stir that all in and they're whole tomatoes, so what you need to do is get a knife and then you can just get the wooden spoon in there and use that as a little mini chopping board. And then you can get pre-chopped ones, but I quite like the sort of difference in texture. Add a generous amount of this nice rock mineral salt and then just stir that all in. And finally, just add some seasoning. This is just a mixed Italian herbs. 
it's quite nice to use fresh herbs as well but if I'm using fresh herbs I'll uh, put those in just before you serve Now I'm going to show you a sneaky trick where you can convert a bolognese into a chilli just by adding a few sneaky ingredients. Start by adding some chilli. Okay. Now obviously if you, if you knew from the word off that this was going to be a chilli, you can put it in earlier. But as this is going to be on a nice low heat for most of the evening while you're eating and stuff, then you can add it now. And the longer you cook this the better it's going to taste. Chilli like many herbs and spices, it's got a lot of medicinal benefits. It's analgesic in that it will numb the area that it comes into contact with and you'll often feel that if you have too much in one go, it numbs your mouth and so on. But because of that special property, um, some, some people use it um, topically to treat injury and treat inflammation. Second very good property it's got is it is anti-inflammatory. And also, just like garlic, it will thin the blood and stop your platelets sticking together and so it's good for the heart and good for the circulation. Cinnamon is another excellent spice. Not only does it taste good, it also helps the body regulate um, the processing of glucose. So often you'll see in recipes that cinnamon is, is added to sweet things. That's because it helps your body deal with the sugar in a sensible way, slows the sugar release uh, into the cells down. It's actually been marketed by some companies in capsules now but my, my opinion is far better to use these herbs in their natural form than buy them as, as supplements. The final thing we're going to do is add a couple of tin of these of these red kidney beans. Anything in a tin is a good idea to rinse it because it, it comes with lots of starch that's leaked into the water that's tinned the beans. Now generally I wouldn't recommend using tinned ingredients, but preparing beans and pulses is very time consuming and in the case of kidney beans, if you don't prepare them properly, it can be dangerous. So I tend to always use tinned kidney beans. And then we're looking at the final magic ingredient. Now this stuff, doesn't matter where you get it from, dark chocolate, is massively high in antioxidants. In fact, it's got even more antioxidants in it than blueberries. Now, if you're interested in these levels of antioxidants, you can look on the internet and look up ORAC, O-R-A-C, and it will come up with a few charts and you'll see all the foods and things like that listed. And so you can choose the foods highest in ORAC units. And basically, it's many, many of the things with a, a good pigment to them are high in ORAC units. So the darker the colour, generally the better it is for your body. Antioxidants are what protects your cells against damage from pollutants, environment, things like that. But it also protects your cells against exercise induced damage. And this is your recovery day. So high antioxidant foods come top of the list. That's why we're prioritising vegetables. And we've got a few secret secrets like dark chocolate up our sleeves.